Another reason why markets can fail is when there are merit and demerit goods that exist. What are merit goods? Well, merit goods are under-consumed and therefore under-provided in the free market mechanism. And that's because individuals don't know the full private benefits of consuming them. There is missing information regarding the full private benefits because these benefits tend to occur in the future. The big merit goods uh, that we always talk about in economics are education and healthcare. Take education. The full benefits of education tend to occur in the future. And because they occur in the future, no one really tends to understand what these benefits are. Okay, so we say that if someone is well educated, they're going to get a good job, they're going to earn higher salaries than if they weren't educated. Yeah, but those benefits occur well into the future. So a lot of consumers tend to ignore them when they're currently consumed. As a result, not enough education is consumed because the full private benefits are not understood. There is missing information regarding the full benefits. At the same time, um, these merit goods tend to have positive externalities in consumption. So if you drew a diagram and you drew the positive externality in consumption diagram, that's fine as long as you explain the diagram relating to the fact that full private benefits are not fully understood. Okay? So that's the issue of merit goods there. For demerit goods, we have the opposite problem. They are over-consumed and therefore over-provided. And the reason is, is because there's missing information again regarding the full private benefits. In truth, the full private benefits should be lower. But individuals don't understand just how badly these goods actually affect them. So good examples of demerit goods, cigarettes, alcoholic drinks, maybe hard drugs. These are all common examples of demerit goods. And when they are consumed, they actually harm the consumer more than that consumer realises. And the problem is, there is missing information regarding what these full negative effects are. Alright, so if you smoke a cigarette, you might know it's going to be bad for you, but you don't know just how bad it is for you. You don't know that in 20 years' time you're going to, gain, you're going to have lung cancer and then maybe die from the fact that you've been smoking cigarettes. You don't actually know that perfectly. And that's the problem. So the, the full negative effects often occur in the future, which means that current level of benefits do not represent the full benefits, which are actually lower. Okay? Um, they also tend to have negative externalities in consumption. So again, drawing that diagram, uh, explaining it in this way, is absolutely fine. Okay? Now, what underpins the market failure here is the notion of information failure. Okay? So there is missing information in both senses regarding the full private benefits. Because of that, individuals either over-consume demerit goods or under-consume merit goods. So information failure exists. So that's when either information does not exist, information is not right or not perfect, or information is ignored. Okay? Could be both of those reasons as well. That's information failure. You could also have a scenario where there's asymmetric information. Okay? When there's asymmetric information, that could also lead to market failure. What does that mean? Well, asymmetric information is when information is existent, it exists, but one party has got more information than another party. So maybe the producers, firms, have got more information than consumers when selling products. Okay? So let's say we go to the mechanics. The mechanic has got a lot more information about what's wrong with our car than we do. We're not educated about how our car works like the mechanic is. So therefore, there's asymmetric info, isn't there? The mechanic's got more information than we as consumers do. And the problem, when there is asymmetric information, is that consumers can't make fully rational decisions. They can't make decisions which maximises their, their benefit, because they don't have the full information. Therefore, maybe they make uh, decisions that are not welfare maximising. And as a result, that can lead to a welfare loss. Okay? That can lead to welfare not being maximised for that consumer. So anytime there is asymmetric information, we have problems because, again, the full private benefits can't be fully understood, which means rational decisions can't necessarily be made, which again means welfare cannot be maximised. And when welfare is not maximised, we have market failure. Alright? So asymmetric information is another way that markets can fail. The merit and demerit goods underpin by information failure is another reason why markets can fail. So two causes of market failure in this one video. I hope that makes sense for you. See you next time.